Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gino's Grooming Channel, and thank you for joining us on another episode of our vlog, where we discuss grooming industry subjects, mostly for aspiring groomers, but also for pet lovers or home groomers, people who want to know a little bit more about the industry. So welcome. With the onset of the new year, I thought this would be a great time to talk about self-care in grooming. This is a subject that does not get that much airtime in the industry, which is kind of weird because it is a physical vocation, but it is not only a physical vocation, it has some unique characteristics that we're gonna talk about because we're working with live animals. So we have to look at our own self-care as looking at our bodies as part of our tools in our toolbox to get our job done. So how we go through our day and how we feel about ourselves and the care that we give ourselves is going to reflect upon the dogs. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we take care of the pets in our care by taking care of ourselves. So we all know that grooming is a physical vocation and a lot of physical vocations share the same characteristics uh, such as you know just the brute force labor, the picking up of animals, the picking up of objects, leaning down, all of that takes a lot of strength and is physical and that is shared between a lot of physical vocations including grooming. The other part of grooming that is shared with other physical vocations is the repetitive motions. So in grooming, that is our brush work, our combing, our hand stripping, using our clippers, using our scissors, right, for fine detail, scissor work. That is all repetitive action that can have an impact on our body. So we absolutely do share that with other physical vocations out there. But what makes grooming unique is that we're working with live animals. And what does this now inject into our day? It injects unpredictability and it also in injects micro movements. And what I mean by that, that even our best pets are gonna be on the table. They may get startled, they may find something twitchy or they might be ticklish about something. So they're gonna move their body. And us as groomers, we're constantly adjusting our bodies Right, to make sure that the pets stay safe, that we're able to do whatever technique we're doing uh, for the grooming. And so we're constantly moving our bodies and that's something that an outside observer might not notice. But as a groomer, you absolutely know that this, these unpredictable micro movements add up throughout the day and really add physicality to the vocation. Now, I'm going to be providing some suggestions to think about for the new year, uh, things where you can improve the self-care as uh, a groomer yourself, uh, things that will help you reflect a better grooming relationship with the pets in your care as well. Now, I call these suggestions because we as groomers know there's a very big difference between the ideal day that we can set up, right, and then the reality of what normally happens in a grooming day, which is someone comes early, someone else comes late, someone who was scheduled for next Tuesday comes today and then all of a sudden you are now grooming stressed out and that's gonna happen but if we do some things for ourselves that will give us better self-care um, on other days that we can control basically controlling what we can control and accepting the things that we can't control right all of those factors those unpredictable factors that happen in a groomer's day we're still gonna have a better outlook because now we've set ourselves up uh, with days that we can actually take a little more of a rest, uh, pay a little more attention to our self-care, and then reflect better on those days that are unpredictable and crazy. We're gonna be able to handle those a lot better. Suggestion number one, stretch before your shift. I know this sounds really common sense, but wow, I don't think too many groomers do this before their shift. Touch your toes, stretch your back, make sure that your neck is loose. Go through it all. Um, because when you're grooming, you don't want to go and reach down for a dog, pick up a dog, and then throw out your back. That's not gonna do you any good anyway, because then you're not working, you're not gonna be able to make money. So the first self-care suggestion that I definitely encourage you to think about is to stretch before you groom. Suggestion number two, take breaks. Take your breaks, take your lunch, and eat like a normal human being. I know it's tough because sometimes, say a client comes late, now we're thrown off. We can't take our lunch in the time that we're supposed to, especially if you're working for a state that has these mandated times that you have to take your breaks and your lunch within, but you have a dog that's wet, so of course we're gonna choose a break and some rules to make sure that the dog is comfortable. Um, so just know that there's a lot of unpredictability, yes, but definitely try to infuse your day with breaks and lunch and try to eat as healthy as you can. Uh, not the seven uh, caffeinated drinks and a donut, which most groomers live on, uh, but really sit down, plan out a good lunch. And if you can't figure out where to 
plant time in your day for a lunch or breaks as a groomer, which is your responsibility because it is going to affect your mood in the day. I'm going to be very blunt. If you can't infuse your day with those breaks and the lunch, the proper lunch, then uh, and you can't afford to do that, then you have to reevaluate your price points. Uh, and we will be continuing our vlog discussion on grooming pricing. That's a big, big discussion. Uh, but definitely know that if you're not going to be able to get through your day and stay sane with your proper breaks and lunch, then you have to evaluate your price points um, and you have to kind of go from there. Suggestion number three, reassess your working area, reassess your station. Uh, take a look from a fresh perspective, almost as if someone that you cared for was going to be working at that station. Because what happens with groomers, we kind of get used to things and we've been working on the same station, but it's not really ergonomically designed for our comfort anymore. Uh, so we kind of need to step back, take a look at how we've been working and see if there's something that you can do to improve your own life. Maybe a little table to raise your dryer so you're not leaning down so much, uh, you know, maybe reorganize your tools so that the tools that you use most often are easily reachable for you. Just kind of look at everything from a fresh perspective to see if you can do something that will make your work life better. Fourth suggestion, and uh, this is something that I am also still learning and I have not mastered, is you have to learn to say no. Um, it's our responsibility as groomers to know what our limitations are and what is going to set us off in a bad mood. Obviously, there is common sense. If the smallest thing sets you off in a bad mood, maybe not the vocation for you. But if you are a true groomer and you have your limitations, but you're good up to those limitations, you can say no to a client, even if they're insisting and saying, gosh, please, please squeeze Fluffy in. What they are not realizing is that by squeezing Fluffy in and you saying yes, where you really should say no, is now you've created a stressful day not only for yourself you've also created a stressful day for all the pets in your care that day um, because now you're rushing through everything and we really can't do that it's our responsibility as groomers to tell our clients what our vocation is and what our limitations are right for the benefit of the pets and i know i know deep in my heart that if clients really truly understood what we're trying to tell them they would absolutely agree and say oh my gosh i would never want my dog or my pet to be handled um, with anyone in a stressful manner an angry groomer or anyone that's you know frazzled they wouldn't want that so we have to be a little better about explaining that and being able to say no and my fifth suggestion, I am not a workout guru, I'm not a fanatic, anything like that, but we definitely need to inject a little more physical activity outside of the grooming sphere. I definitely have observed that a lot of groomers say, wow, I work such a physical job. When I come home, I'm so tired. I just want to sit in front of the TV, uh, eat my junk food and go to sleep basically is what happens because they're not stretching. They're not taking their breaks during their day. They're not eating a good lunch. And that's kind of what happens. You just become a lump on the couch at the end of your day. And we kind of have to do a paradigm shift in grooming and change that. Um, we have to make sure that by following some suggestions and giving ourselves self-care so that we have better energy with the pets in our care, that we also infuse some physical activity outside of the grooming sphere. So a nice brisk walk, maybe walk your dog at night. Make sure um, you go to the gym if you want to have a tennis game with your spouse or your best friends or uh, whatever it is. Try to inject some physical activity in your life uh, because it's not only going to make you stronger, it's self-care, but it is going to reflect upon how you are happy in your life, how happy you are in your life. And this is proven with those endorphins. So make sure that those kind of suggestions that I talked about, the first four, you infuse that in your day and so that you can make room for suggestion five, which is to add some physical activity outside of grooming into your life. Well, guys, that's about it. I hope that this helps. In fact, I know it will help. Um, and this is an ongoing struggle for all groomers, but we have to get there. We have to have better energy with our pets. We have to take care of ourselves a little better um, because it does reflect and we have to communicate better with our clients overall. Guys, if you like this video, we really appreciate you clicking that thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to put them down below. We will answer you. Really appreciate your time. Guys, we will see you soon and best of luck in the new year.